Hi, good morning. Good morning. At the museum, yeah, we meet sure. Stoning nice Tennant, a 40-year resident of Dayton. Who so better to show us around? We're in Dayton, and we're right in front of the old school. This is the oldest surviving building uh, in town. Uh, it was built in 1865 and used as the school continuously until 1953. Dayton is the site of many Nevada firsts, including the first marriage and the first dance, which took place at Hall Station and drew a crowd of 159 people. There must have been a lot of wallflowers, though. Only nine of them were female. Of course, the Mormons were very active in settling the, the West here. Mm -hmm. The Abner Blackburn was part of a Mormon wagon train that was headed for California because the Mormons wanted to get involved in the gold after the discovery in California, wanted to get involved in that. and as a church effort. They wanted to uh, make the money, ship it back to Salt Lake City, and they sent wagon trains out here, and Abner Blackburn was involved in the very early parts of the California gold discovery, and so he was on his way to California, and they were camped here waiting for the snow to melt on the mountains so that they could get over the passes, and he took a pan, took his uh, butcher knife that everybody carried on their sides, took his knife up there and cleaned out some of the cracks in the rocks. And right here where you see the, the canyon, the rocky part of the canyon coming down, mm -hmm. uh, right in there in that spot, he dug some gravel out of the cracks in the rocks, panned it and came out with a nugget about the size of a little fingernail. Mm -hmm. And so in 1849, spring of 1849, he discovered the gold there in the canyon and that's where it all started anyway, right there in that spot. I read something that, uh, that mentioned that the town was not always called Dayton, that it was called uh, Chinatown before that. Is that true? Yeah, there have been a number of names. It was called Paws and Ponder. It was called Mineral Rapids. I like it, Paws and Ponder. Yeah. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> Pretty unique. Uh, and it, then Chinatown, uh, and that was because we have a ditch that was dug up here, and the Chinese came in as a workforce to dig the ditch, and then when they were finished digging the ditch, they just sort of dumped them. And they had no place to go, really, and they created a little community down here and sort of lived on the fringes of what was going on because the, the people here were very uh, against the Chinese, and they wouldn't allow them to take jobs that the American people were taking, working at. So they had to just work all of the leftover uh, mining, and they would go out, and they would, we would cut down trees, and then they had to dig up the roots. The only way they could get anything, they would dig the stumps out and sell the wood, which was a major commodity right, at that wow. time for all the yeah, heat and everything. It's a rough but life. They, they really had a tough life here. Nevada's first cemetery is located nearby on a site that was also part of the immigrant trail. Dayton was an ideal location for a trading center because of its proximity to the Carson River, which allowed the processing of ore. The nearby forest gave cord wood for heat and steam-powered engines. Well, this originally, even though this was the Lincoln Highway, this is called River Street. And the reason it was called River Street is because this low area over here that we see used to be the river channel. In 1872, they had a big flood, and the channel changed over there and left this over here dry. And they still called it River Street after that. I was gonna say, if the river was this close, you could see a flood was probably a much bigger danger. Then. Yeah. Now we're coming into downtown area, and this is a Gold Canyon Steakhouse now in the Wild Horse Saloon. It's gone through lots of different names and changes over the years. But this building is, is one of the oldest buildings in town. It is one that's been moved around as well. Mm. This originally was called the Europa Bar. I can see the name painted over up on oh, top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can. Now, that, what happens there is the paint, and then it gets sandblasted, and the paint protects the wood, and so you see that relief yeah. that comes out uh, just accidentally. But, yeah, this is the the Europa Bar, and then there was another bar next to it was called the American. And oh. so the Bascos and the uh, Italians went to the Europa Bar, and the <laughs> Americans had their own bar next door. And 
Dayton's population grew to 2,500 in the early 1860s. By the turn of the century, farms and ranches provided produce and grain for both the Comstock and Carson City. But by the 1950s, there were only 200 people living here as the local economy faltered. Today, Dayton is experiencing a comeback in growth and population. This is another building that's been moved. It was uh, originally the depot for the Carson, Colorado, the railroad spur that came from Mound House, connected with the V&T, and came down and crossed the river and went on out uh, to southern Nevada and Arizona. This is the old butcher shop. It was built uh, in the 1870s. The stonework is, the Chinese did that. And this is their trademark design. Whenever oh, you see pattern. a building with the cross hash marks in the stone, that is what, how the Chinese did it. The Italian were famous for their stonework. Mm -hmm. They did the kind of stonework that's up there on the facade in the bluestone building that we just passed. And this is the style. Whenever you see that, recognize that's Chinese. This building is the Braun and Loftus General Store. And the sign had, on the side of the building had completely eroded away and gone. Mm -hmm. And Levi Strauss gave us a grant to repaint this building with the original sign. And the way they did it was kind of unique. They came out with a big projector and they painted this thing at night. <laughs> they set up over here in this far lot and uh -huh. they projected the original sign on the side of the building, outlined everything precisely and repainted the sign exactly the way it was. And actually this sign is only uh, about five years old. Wow. Oh, wow. It feels like Stoney has told us everything there is to know about Dayton, but even with all we've seen and heard, there's still more to explore. The museum offers a detailed walking tour marked with nearly 30 sites of interest. Our time here is up, so it's back to the highway for us.